follow me this way. Nine-year-old Vigo and his little brother Jude are getting wired up for science. This is a brainwave, and these squiggly lines have a story to tell about how children's brains function as they learn to read. One of the things we're trying to do is use children's brain activity to predict how they're going to do in school in reading-related subjects a year later. With support from the National Science Foundation, cognitive neuroscientist Sarah Laszlo and her team at Binghamton University are developing a test designed to diagnose reading difficulties early on, and that's critical. Studies show many methods now used to help struggling readers become less effective after the second grade. If we can predict how a kid is going to be doing in school way in advance on the basis of their brain activity, that's really valuable. Laszlo says the key is to build up a database of brain waves from lots of different kids. The more variability we have, the better, because it allows us to see what's really different between the strongest and the weakest, and that helps us to make predictions about other kids. The test itself is essentially a computer game. Words and random letters flash on the screen. When you see your name, you press a button. Jude was acing it, but if he had been struggling, his brain activity would show it. We can look at each of those parts of the signal and see where the kid might be having trouble. Are they having trouble knowing what the letters are? Are they having trouble pronouncing the word? Are they having trouble linking it up with meaning? Valuable information for providing the right kind of help. Thank you for being willing to sacrifice your hair to science. In a twist, Laszlo's reading research may have applications in a completely different field of science, biometrics. In the course of studying all those brain waves, she noticed no two were exactly alike. I gave a talk about this, and my collaborator, Zheng Hong Jin, in bioengineering, he said, hey, you know what that reminds me of? That reminds me of biometrics. And Sarah said, OK, that's possible. And according to her expertise, I think that is a very interesting hypothesis. And she think, OK, we can definitely try to investigate and try to prove that. Should be good. So they did tests using student volunteers. We use a whole huge long stream of images that are designed to elicit very different responses from person to person. We collect the brain activity, and then we're able to identify a person on the basis of that brain activity. And it worked. When the same individuals were scanned again, they could be identified with 100% accuracy. The next thing we asked ourselves was, OK, we, we, we showed it worked. Now how do we break it? After all, biometrics are only reliable if they can't be faked. So they're trying to see if they can make one person's brain print mimic that of another. One possibility involves flashing lights to stimulate a subject's brain in ways that could potentially fool the system. We're trying. I wouldn't say that we've conclusively demonstrated that yet. It's kind of hard, you can imagine, to turn one person's brain activity into somebody else's. So we'll have to wait and see if brain waves become a big thing in biometrics. But Laszlo says there could be many applications for brain printing, and the technology is moving fast. Even 10 years ago, we wouldn't have even been able to do this in the lab. It would have taken too long to capture the data um, to be able to realistically do it with, say, four-year-olds like we do. So I definitely think that the technology will get better and we'll be able to collect this data faster and more easily. Reading brains to foster a new wave of successful readers and perhaps a biometric breakthrough. I'm thinking positive thoughts on that. For Science Nation, I'm Miles O'Brien.